Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now, last week we delved into my designer handbag collection and I still had a few more requests asking for the designer shoe collection. So although it's only the week after I thought, sod it, let's just do it. And yeah, I'm gonna run you through my designer shoes, which I have rather conveniently placed on these shelves. Now, if you've watched my closet tour video, there will be a little eye up here just in case you want to catch up on that one if you haven't then you will have seen that this area is in fact where I keep most of my shoes but what I've done just for now is strewn away all of my high street shoes pop them on the floor over there just so that I can run through the designer ones as they seem to be the ones that you guys want to see Now, much like I did with the handbag collection, I have arranged all of these into categories, so I'm gonna run through them via their categories, just to kind of make this flow a little bit easier. So I'm gonna start off with court shoes, and my first court shoe are these Jimmy Chews. I believe their style name is Romy. This is basically the mid heel, and I have to admit that this height of heel is perfect this court shoe in actual fact is perfect it is the most perfect court shoe that has ever touched my feet i would definitely recommend this the suede is so soft obviously it's designer shoe so it's leather inside as well the sole is also leather although i know a lot of people like to resole their shoes before they've even worn them for me with the court shoe i don't bother because it's not like it's an everyday shoe however if you're going to wear them for work then that might be an idea for you to toy around with so i tend to wear these with jeans and a t-shirt because that is my standard uniform they look great paired with a blazer as well and also you know like I was saying before if you are in need of a work shoe that's going to be comfortable stylish and probably last you a lot longer than a high street shoe then a Jimmy Choo is definitely your best bet it's probably the best court shoe you could ever buy fact the Gucci Marmont a loafer with a heel. I love them. I love them so much. Do I wear them a lot? No. <laughs> no, I'm going to be honest. I barely wear them. Red suede. Number one, it's not the most practical of fabrics or colours to own in a shoe. It's also a tricky colour to try and style with stuff. I mean, they look great with a pair of like light wash denim and a white t-shirt. I mean, that's literally all I wear on a daily basis anyway. These were quite expensive. Um, they've probably gone up in price now, but I believe these were 500 and something pounds, 540 maybe. Um, I still love them. I won't get rid of them. There's no need. So I will keep them just as my token red shoe and I'll just make a mental note that I need to wear these a little bit more because they were so expensive. Right, next we're going to move on to the sandal category um, because these are in actual fact all of my spring summer shoes that I have out here. There are a few boots at the bottom which I'll get to at the end but they're ankle boots because I do still wear them through spring and summer. So if anyone's watching this in winter, like she's got a lot of spring summer shoes. That's because it's spring and summer right now. Right, so let's crack on with these. These are a wedged espadrille. They are by Chloe. Chloe Mainline, not C by Chloe. Um, this was the first round of these wedge espadrilles that was brought out and this was last summer. I do believe they brought this style out again this summer. And it's a great shoe, I'm not going to lie, it's a great shoe. That is a mass of wedge and platform to have on a size 8 foot. So I bought them a size small, I'm sure this is a trick that many of you have tried before. They actually don't look that bad, they do come up a little bit big, so technically I think I probably only bought them about half a size too small. Um, how often do I wear them? Not as often as I probably should, but I can't actually bring myself to get rid of them. I bought them off Net-A-Porter. Um, I actually had a Net-A-Porter voucher for £200, so I only had to pay a little bit extra to get these. 
Next up, we have these tan leather sandals by Isabel Morant. I wanted these for so long. I believe I first saw these on Sincerely Jewels, saw them and I was like, yes, love those. These were actually gifted to me from Netta Porter. Um, I love them. I do wear them every summer. Um, I got them at the beginning of the spring summer season last year um, and I have worn them this year. They do take a little bit of breaking in. Um, I bought them a size smaller than I normally would. These are a 40. Technically, I think I probably would still need a 41, but because they're fully open and I have very narrow feet, it's never the width, it's always the length that causes an issue for me. They're a good shoe. Obviously, the heel height is not very high at all. I'd say that's probably about two and a half, three inches. Um, they're a wearable shoe, they look great with denim, so so easy to wear and they're just quite a nice classic, relatively simple style. Right, I'm going to skip over to these for a minute because these are actually another pair of Isabel Morants and they're actually the flat version of the sandals that I just had a minute ago. These are like a snakeskin effect leather with all of the gold studs and they are, as you can see, completely flat. So there's not actually a lot of arch support with these. Having said that, they are actually a really comfortable sandal and they're more comfortable than the heeled ones. I've never had a blister from these. Um, there is all of the detailing and wrap arounding and poppering up around the ankle here, which can be a bit of a faff to put on, but once they're on, they're on. They look really cute with like a nice little summer dress uh, and these obviously have this really nice little design feature around the ankle there. Right now on to the pair which I think everybody has been waiting for me to discuss and it is the Hermes Oran sandals. Now you all saw me buy these on one of my very first vlogs. I will uh, pop an eye up here somewhere so that you can go back and check that out if you missed it. Um, I got these in a size 40 and a half. They fit perfectly. I think my size would be a seven and a half. Are they worth the money? If I'm being honest, now, yes, I think they are. They did take some breaking in. There were three days, um, not consecutively, but three days where I did come home with blisters. But Looking at it now, it's all worth it because these shoes have softened up so much now. They're probably the most versatile pair of sandals that I own and actually that's the reason that I bought them. I said to you guys back in that vlog that I wanted to buy a pair of sandals that were going to last me for years. They would be my staple tan sandals and they go with everything. So these for me were definitely worth the money. Just bear in mind that you will have to break them in before they get to that point of being super duper comfortable. Okay, I'm about to make a very bold statement about this next shoe. This is, a please excuse its rather withered appearance. This is the ATP Atelier Rosa Slide. Now, I bought these from Netta Porter for, I think, £130. I bought them last spring, summer, and I actually bought them before Simon and I went away on our big honeymoon. These sandals were one of two pairs of sandals that I took away on this road trip. So that's six weeks, two pairs of sandals, and I took one pair of Converse with me. So these really, really did some mileage. I mean, look at the sole, look at how sorry that is. These shoes were the best shoes I have ever bought. The best 130 pounds I've ever spent. There was one day when we went to San Francisco and we walked, I think it was 13 miles. And I walked 13 miles in these shoes. They were excellent. Never once have they given me a blister. And I know which, if you look at, because your toe actually comes through this bit and then the rest of your toes stick out through this bit. So in theory, that should not be a comfortable shoe, but I cannot stress to you guys enough how comfortable these were. So soft. Um, and they were really, in my opinion, they're just a really cool shoe. You don't see this kind of shape which goes along and down the toe very often. Um, and yeah, I was just really drawn to them for that reason. And then the kind folks over at ATP Atelier 
saw that I'd been wearing these shoes for six weeks and when we got back off our honeymoon um, they said I'm sure your shoes are worn out by now and would you like to pick another pair so I did I picked the exact same shoes and as you can see this is how they're supposed to look all nice because I've only worn these a couple of times this year um, but these are the exact same shoes they are the Rosa slides these ones are in the python skin and again they are equally as comfortable these have never given me a blister so definitely my favorite shoe I think I'm gonna actually make that bold statement my favorite shoe a lot of my shoe purchases have been very thought out and very wise, even if I do say so myself, very wise purchases. And I'm all about wardrobe staples and things which are versatile and go with a multitude of outfits because I do like to rewear things. So I set myself this task that I wanted to replace all of my high street shoes with designer ones. And one thing that I had on my list was a pair of designer trainers so these are the ones that i chose um i know i said i wasn't flashy and they've obviously got this massive logo written on the side which my husband thinks looks like has just been done with sharpie pen um and then they've charged me like 400 quid for them but it is actually stitched into the canvas and all of these little rips and these marks um, other than what's on this crepe salt there just because I've worn them quite a lot but all these other little bits and pieces it is the authentically worn and distressed look I haven't damaged them this is how they come um, it's not too clumpy but it's also not too thin it is flat inside but there is I think it's probably going to be a bit difficult to show you guys you'll have to just take my word for it there is a tiny bit of arch support on the inner side here so it's not completely flat as a pancake these are my one designer pair of trainers i was torn between these a pair of isabel morant trainers which were a little bit cheaper and then also golden goose brand the ones with the star on them i still actually really want a pair of those even though i've been told by a few people they're not that comfortable i do just really like them i think they're a nice classic style um, i love the color i like the fact that they're not bright white i love that they're sort of this off-white creamy color these are the chloe and I think they're called Lauren Flats and they bring these out every season for about the last three seasons and they bring them out in suede and in leather and they have so many different colours. They also have them in, in a court version with uh, a blocked heel. My friend has got them and she's actually got them in the red suede and every time I see them I'm like, oh, those are so nice. I love them with the block heel. I love this little scallop detail which runs around the rim of your shoe and when you have them on it really, really frames the feet nicely. It's like with most of the shoes, I bought these in a size 40. I find Chloe does come up a little bit big. So just bear that sizing in mind if you were looking to get a pair of these Lauren flats. Right now my next two pairs of shoes, I bought them this week. They were, if you watch me on Instagram stories, they were my get well soon Emma treat to myself. And they are the Stella McCartney loafers. Now obviously being Stella McCartney, they are not real leather and so therefore they are not real snake skin, so don't panic. Um, but they are actually quite soft, which sometimes with Stella shoes, you can kind of have a bit of an issue because they're not leather. They could be a bit stiff. The only thing I will say is that because it's not leather, your feet sweat in these quite a lot because your feet can't breathe. So I ordered them in two colours, in the black and white and in the brown. And when they arrived, I consulted you guys on Instagram and it was a resounding yes to keeping both colours. They were £159, I think. Um, I'm sorry, I'm so bad at remembering prices. I should really get a better system together, maybe write them down, but um, I believe they were £159. These were definitely one of my finest sale purchases that I've ever made. I've already worn these, I wore them out the other day. Um, and I bought both of those in a size 40 and a half. Right now, this next pair of shoes I have worn to death, much the same as my ATP Rosa slides. These are the Aquazura, and I can never remember if they're called the Chrissy or the Christy, but either way, they're the Chrissy or the Christy flat, and they are the really soft leather ones with this like crisscross. Uh, lace up detail and then they tie around the ankle. I've got this cute little gold 
heel here and point it out although mine <laughs> not so pointed anymore it just looks a little bit sad to be quite honest instagram made me buy these shoes and i'm so glad i did because such a good shoe go with everything good for autumn winter as well although not when it's super super cold because you kind of have to go sockless um but yeah a really good investment shoe right now this season i had a little bit of a thing for mules and so uh, that brings me on to these, which are the Stuart Weitzman Satin Mules. Now, I love Stuart Weitzman. I have quite a few pairs of the over the knee boots and they are the best boots around for autumn winter. Um, I've never actually had any of the other shoe styles. So they actually sent me an email and said, would you like to pick a new style for spring, summer? And I was like, oh, Yes, please. Thank you very much. Um, so I picked these satin mules and they, they came in a few colours. They're quite simple. Um, the cut of them, they've got this slightly square toe. Um, they're just a really simple pair of shoes, which I like pairing with. Um, a really nice fitting pair of jeans, a blazer and a white t-shirt. So I guess something kind of like what I've got on today. But yeah, they're, they're nicely made. They've got the leather sole, which is exactly what you'd expect from a designer pair of shoes. Onto the Gucci loafers, of which I have two pairs, and I'm going to start off rather controversially with these. These have mixed reviews, <laughs> and I know if you'd have shown me these a few years ago and gone, What do you think of this shoe? I'd have just gone, Take it away, take it out of my eyesight. It is the most hideous shoe I've ever seen. But as with most shoes, and most things in life these days, Instagram made it into a thing and I fell in love. They were very expensive. I think they were £780. Are they worth that? No, probably not. Because I mean, you can't really wear them in the rain because this like touches the floor and soaks up the rain and then you've just got like wet furry things on your feet. I'm going to be quite open and admit, I love them. If we all like the same stuff, wouldn't life be boring? So cut me a bit of slack, please. I'm hoping I'm going to redeem myself with these <laughs> because these are um, one of my latest shoe purchases. These arrived actually at the same time as when I bought these, although I did buy these the week before I bought these last week. Um, and again, this was the whole idea of creating a designer capsule shoe collection. And I just want to make a few points on the style of these because Gucci make a couple of different loafer styles. These ones are the convertible ones. So they have these seams at the back. The leather that they use to make these convertible styles is so much softer than the classic loafer. A bonus of these also that I'm quite enjoying is that because they're black and maybe it's just the shape of them, um, despite the fact that these are still a size seven, they make my feet look tiny. If I were going to recommend one pair of shoes um, right now, it would definitely be these. Um, I've loved them since they arrived. I've only had them for a couple of days now, but I have worn them every day since they arrived. They're so soft, well worth the money. Right, now in that Get Well Emma package that I ordered from Matches, I also picked up these boots. These are tan suede boots and they're by Todd's. That is just me in a boot. So I love this chunky buckle. I love the shape of the heel and how it does this at the back. And when I put them on, they just look so, so good. Um, I haven't worn them yet. I'm really excited for autumn to kind of come around so I could wear them with a pair of skinny jeans and like a big chunky um, jumper or big chunky cardigan. Um, so yeah, they were a really good sale buy. They were £267, I think. Right now, another pair of classic boots, which is a style that I'd had my eye on for quite some time, were the Isabel Morant Dicker boots. Um, these are available in a few different colours. They all tend to be relatively neutral. Uh, the heel height, very, very wearable for everyday use. Um, yeah, they're just a good boot. The suede is a really, really nice quality. Definitely worth the money. Um, 
colour wise I, I did buy these at the beginning of this season bought them from Louisa Aroma. they were 300 and something pounds um, which is I think not a bad price for a pair of ankle boots like I said the suede is a really really nice quality um, they are very versatile they go with so much stuff I love the fact that you can wear them with like a really feminine little tea dress but then you can also wear them with skinny jeans the Chloe Susanna boots. It took me, I think I, I said on social media, six years to buy these boots. And I remember when these were very first released and you had Kate Moss and Sienna Miller wearing them to Glastonbury and things. And believe it or not, back in the day, they were only 450 quid. They're now 850 quid. And that is how much I paid for these boots. Isn't that insane? However, I look at them and I don't regret that for a second because these boots are definitely a staple. If like me, you want something that is comfortable, something that will last year upon year upon year and something that will age, and get better with age, then the Chloe Susanna boot is definitely the boot for you. Size wise, these are a size 40. I do find that they come up big because they do have the pointed toe. So if you have narrow feet like me, then you're gonna need to go down a half size. They're just a great boot. And if it's a boot that you have always wanted, I'd say they're definitely worth saving up for. I do agree 850 pounds is a lot of money and yes, hands up, that is a bit overpriced. I bought these myself, paid with my own money, no vouchers, no nothing. Um, and uh, yeah, they um, they hurt me. They, they, they physically pained me inside to buy them. But now that I have them, I feel like I can rest. Finally, I am at peace because I own the Chloe Susanna boots. These boots, along with the Chloe Faye bag that I showed you in my handbag collection, were one of the first luxury purchases that I made. Um, as you can see, they are a Chelsea boot style. I think I figured out that these boots ended up costing me about £420. They're a really good boot. If anyone's looking to buy a Chelsea boot, I would definitely recommend Saint Laurent. Um, they make a really nice style. I love this little bit of a slight elevated heel, but yeah, it's not too much. They're great for day-to-day -day wear. I normally wear them with a pair of like black skinny jeans and a really chic wool coat. And I get compliments on them wherever I wear them. I've worn them a couple of times this summer even, and when we've had a couple of grim days. My feet definitely enjoy wearing these because they just feel so nice. They wear really, really well. And I think this is where designer shoes tend to triumph over high street shoes. It's just that you might initially spend a lot more money on them, but in the long run, they're just worth it so much more because you get so much wear out of them. And I think I can say for the majority of my shoe collection, that's kind of what I was going for, is just to buy really good core staple pieces, which are going to last me years and years. Right, guys, that was my designer shoe collection. Thank you very much for watching. It's been a pleasure, as always. Don't forget to catch my designer handbag collection, which you can find here, maybe. And also, if you want to subscribe to the channel, just so you don't miss any of my future videos, that would be greatly appreciated. And uh, yeah, I will see you next time.